to uh, the show tonight. I'm your guest host, Brian. How are you? We are joined by uh, John from Boston, and we've got Eric from New Hampshire. We have Buddy from Chicago, and direct from Manhattan with the worst internet in the world who's been frozen for the last several seconds, Jay, who will say hi as soon as his internet is not frozen anymore. <laughs> he from the free internet in the room. So we may just have this frozen picture of Jay hitting the vape for the rest of the show. I don't know. Oh, he's gone. Maybe he'll be he re-voted. fresh. I don't know. We'll find out. <clears throat> so Eric brought up a topic that I, I thought maybe we might talk about on the show. He was very excited about talking about this. I looked and tried to find some keywords to see if we'd covered it before. I know we have, but maybe John or one of his kids or whatever will title this show in a way where it's more searchable and people can find it. And what Eric was talking about was what happens when you fall ill before an event? What do you do? So that's question one tonight. Eric, would you like to go first on this? I know what we need to do is get a replacement DJ real quick. And how would this impact your clients? I mean, let's just say it's a wedding and okay. we all, we don't want to fall ill before a wedding, but it can happen. And so you're going to call a, a, another DJ that you find that is going to be able to handle the situation. And then you also need to contact your client who are, in this case, a bride and groom. And hopefully everything will go all right. You know, uh, you don't want a bad name. This business, you know, you get a bad name no matter what. Sometimes as good as you do, right. people like to give you a bad review, you know. But if you're ill and I'm not talking about the snipples. You know, I'm talking, you, you fall suddenly ill where you cannot perform the event. And at this case, you're two days away from the event, say, and I uh, hope it never happens to anybody. And, but in the case that it does, what do you do? How do you handle this? How, you know, what is the impact on you, your client, and, and the DJ that you're having to, to take over the duties? Sure. A lot of questions there. There I've really got, are. I, I'm sorry, but I mean, don't be sorry. It happens. It, it can be hap It can happen. You know, Jay's so, back. Yeah, Jay's back. We're talking about what happens when you get sick in an event, and your mic is still muted. Uh, Bad internet. Like sorry. Nice. Uh, who would like to go next? What's the question? The topic is: What happens if you fall ill and can't do an event? Okay, you fall ill, but you're going to do the event anyway. How ill are you? Are you in the hospital? Then yeah. you do the event. That, that was the next okay. question. See, Jay's always jumping ahead. Yeah, just a level. I, I broke I'm the ill part right now, and Jay's already yeah. on question 34. So I broke my leg. <laughs> I did seven events with a broken leg with crutches. You just you do the event. It sucks, but I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm to figure out how to get somebody to cover it and know all the ins and outs of the event. Right. That's that's a challenge nobody wants. I don't know. Um, John? Yeah. Yeah. Thoughts on this? Yeah, sadly, you won't know how seriously ill you are until probably a day or two before. So there really isn't a whole lot of time to plan. If right. I mean, if you can stand up and, and power through it, you know, take some Tylenols. I mean, what do you got? You know, a runny nose and a fever? Mm -hmm. you, that's that's not an excuse. So if you're in an accident and injured, you got to start making some phone calls. Like, all right, I need another body there. I can't physically be there because of you know right. X Y Z. We're, but, we're uh, not talking about snipples and a cop here. I'm talking well, seriously. You know, there are a lot of factors yeah. here that I think should be considered, and I'll hold my tongue until Buddy jumps in and gives us his synony uh, his his uh, his thing on this. Buddy Pedia, it's your turn. We all wait you know, for Buddy's input. Yeah, that's right. You know, one of the things is that uh, right now a lot of people are still afraid with COVID. So if you have COVID, 
you need to communicate that oh, with shit. the bride and groom because some people will come back positive of COVID. Some people don't care. You know, they're like, okay, fine, great to stay away from everyone. You may get a customer who's like, no, don't come. And this is when being detail oriented is very, very important, especially for a wedding and having all property documentation and having proper notes. This way, if let's say Eric is my partner DJ and he's my friend, he's, you know, lives, you know, a few miles away. I can give him a phone call and say, hey, Eric, are you available such such date, you know, this Saturday, this Sunday, this Friday, whatever it is, and then communicate to him all the information so that way they know everything and then walk through. Plus, the other part of that, which Tracy and I just ran into this uh, last year uh, with COVID, we both had it, uh, and the customer's like, no, we don't want you at our wedding. <laughs> we uh, also had a Zoom call, not only the two of us, but also with the other DJ and the couple, so that way they knew who it was coming, they knew everything was going on, all those little nuances you went through, all the notes we went through. So it's like an hour and a half Zoom call, and this way they felt comfortable with him taking over the wedding and was right. seamless when they came in and took care of it. So that's what communication is very important, not only with the couple, but also you have a circle of friends, a circle of DJs that you talk to say, Hey, uh, Hey Jay, I, I know you're like an hour away from me. I'm not feeling a hundred percent. I'm coming down with something. Are you available? Just try and put your ducks in a row. If you are really super sick with a bad virus that you can't perform, you can't do stuff. Then you can turn around and say, okay, fine. Great. Or, Hey Eric, are you available? This is why having friends is an important thing, but it's also because of the fact that you should look at as an individual business. If something happens to you, if you don't have an employee or another DJ step in your place, you need to have those kind of communication lines out with other DJs. I think well, the community I as a whole does that. We've all seen the emergency. I got in an accident. I've had, my dad died, some, some tragedy. And it's, I've always been impressed with the way the community steps up. At the same time, I've been very dismayed at how the community will then demand full payment. Or you're going to pay me everything, right? By the way, I'm sorry. I apologize to everyone watching this that I was knocked off twice by the internet here. So as a way of coping, I now am sharing off my phone because when you're challenged in our industry, you find a solution and you go with it. That's just the way we operate. My internet kicked me off and I said, I've got a phone. I wonder if, if I hotspot, if it'll work better and it appears to be doing so. So this sort of adds to the conversation. You find a solution. And as Buddy said, you put the word out. There's an emergency. I have a wedding that starts in three hours. Here's the music folder. And we've all done this. We all have that Manila folder or an online folder that has every song, every dance, every intro, everything. And if you're not doing that, please do so. Because if you're in my neighborhood and I'm not working and you get sick and tragedy, I'm happy to cut you, but give me the tools that I need to succeed so your company doesn't look badly. Well, let That's me all there is to it. Let, let me chime in real quick here because you all have really good points uh, to Buddy's point, And I'll work backwards on some personal experiences that I've had. There was a wedding that was happening during the height of COVID. They had one hall where they were allowed to have weddings here in Wisconsin. And before you went into that hall, you had to sign a COVID waiver form. It was a, a big deal. This was you know, early in the summer of 2020, where they were able to do this. My friend Scott was supposed to do this event. Scott got COVID, so he could not do it. Per the hall's rules. And nobody really knew what was going on. It was all a little scary at the time. So I stepped in and I did it masked up. It was out of his control. He could not do the event if he had tested positive for COVID. I, I had not. So I was good. I wasn't sick. What would you tell him? So, so there's, there's one. The second one I'll tell you about is five years ago where I had an event in the loop in Chicago. It was a 50th birthday party. And I was booked through one of the gentlemen from the hot mix five to do this event because of my expertise in the type of music that these folks wanted. Mm -hmm. 
and at two th- a little after two in the morning that day my father passed away oh and there were a lot of really goofy circumstances at the time with my mother and who was who was with her at the time and i i did the event it was one of the hardest events i've ever done i don't remember much about it i was pretty numb but they had a good time and they tipped really well it was a very long day the the loop in chicago was an absolute nightmare it was torn apart it took me i think seven hours to get down there i left at 11 and i got there a little after six because and, and this should be like an hour and a half drive but it was just crazy i did the event then that's to jay's point you know how bad is it really can you do it the other example that i will give is more to eric's point whereas if you absolutely positively just can't do it and that's when i stroked out i was in the hospital blind a paraplegic could barely speak couldn't move couldn't leave for five weeks and that was where the friends come in handy that's when people stepped up and took care of my events and you know there was never any exchange of money i take a light deposit because of that once bitten twice shy so i don't take these giant deposits from people that i have to hang on to and you know possibly give to somebody else in case there's an emergency no it's like hey you know what are you cool with the balance yes okay done and done take the whole balance kind of thing and that's what i did um i did do another one one time that was kind of weird a friend of mine was ill and he asked me to do the event because he was ill and i said of course you know so i did the event for no money which was odd because he collected the balance on it and it was a high paying event whatever i'm a player i took one for the team but that was kind of rotten that was wrong yeah it was well, we don't talk to that guy anymore anyway. Yeah. And there, and for those of you wondering, watching this, here's the rule. If there's an emergency where you absolutely cannot do the event, all the money for the event goes to the person that takes your ass out of the fire. Yeah. So your company doesn't yeah. get ruined. So your rep doesn't get ruined. When they step up, when you need them to clutch hit and they get a home run, they get every penny of the event if you want to play the game of well i'm keeping the 25 percent, and i'll give you then you know what you deserve to fail i'm sorry it goes back to what we talked about recently about a um, fiance dies a month out from the wedding and djs go on facebook and go yeah i feel terrible asking for the remaining balance no you write them a check for everything they've given you you wish them well you tell them how sorry you are and you walk away you don't get into pinching pennies over death over illness or over saving your company's reputation and if you're gonna do that then get out of the business right now something well yeah uh, something else i wanted to bring up here was something that we have talked about on the show before i know we have it was something that i actually brought up to howie several years ago and that's the concept of stage health and i think uh, jay knows what i'm talking about yeah i do and maybe john knows what i'm are you guys familiar with that term stage health yep totally i know you are but is anyone else familiar with that term basically what stage health is it's this concept that and and i believe this it's it's a real thing no matter how ill you are or how no matter how bad you feel yeah you can pop enough pills yeah. and just get Take enough shower energy up to yeah, you can get run it through run an adrenaline. adrenaline yeah absolutely yeah 100 yeah, percent. you might fall over dead when you're done but, but you can get through the event yeah 100 percent. stage health is something that i've done many times uh yep. i've got two events this week that i have to do i have Four events next week that I have to do. And only one of them is a club gig. The rest of them are mobiles. And the Saturday gig is a big production for me. Excuse me. Extra sound, extra lights, all kinds of stuff. And I know I'm going to be exhausted when I do this thing. And I know it's going to take a lot out of me. But I'm going to use stage health to get through it for lack of sleep, for lack of energy, for whatever it is. 
I mean, it's, it, that, that's a real thing. Is it good for you? Probably not. Yeah. Make a habit of it? Not yeah. such a good idea. But if the show must go on, stage health is a thing. Do you sign the contract? Do your name on the contract? Do they expect you to show up? Then guess what? You show up. Like, I hate when people are prideful about, I had a cold, but I did the event anyway. Dude, I don't care if your right arm got cut off. If you could stop the bleeding enough to get through it, that's the obligation you have. Now, it's changed with generations and age. There is a new functionality, and you're going to start seeing the under 30s go, hey, I got a hangnail and a splinter. I went to urgent care. I can't be at the wedding. Like, no, no. In, in all what? fairness, in all fairness, Jay, and you and I have had this conversation many times. Everybody has their own levels of tolerance. That I will give you. Yes. You 100%. look at me. You looked at me during COVID like I was a cockroach after the apocalypse because I didn't care. No. Nope. Everybody else was losing their minds and I was fine. And you were like, how are you fine? And I'm like, well, this Drugs. is not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. No. I'm going to look at the bright side. No, 100%. So everyone has different degrees of what coping. they're willing to put up with. Everyone has a different what, pain what they threshold. Have the, what, what, they, what they have the, the uh, tools they've acquired over time to cope with. Yeah. Because it take, you've got to be conditioned for this stuff. Right. I don't think most people wake up one day and they're ready to be a Marine. you got to go through basic training and go through a lot of crap. But look at the audience you have tonight in the in the room. You've, I mean, I don't think I think I could cut John C's leg off, and he'd still show up at the gig. I think Eric. I think Eric, I think Eric yeah. probably uh, Eric. Yeah. Eric doesn't even know where he is half the time. Eric's been dead for eight years, and he right. still shows up. <laughs> buddy, oh, yeah. you know, buddy, <laughs> buddy doesn't feel good one day. I know, buddy handles it because he refunds the client one hundred percent, but he still shows up. So, buddy. He's going to be there. He'll refund first, but he's going to be there. I'm just saying, like, we're all at a different level, but I've always taken it personally, and hence why my company's name is my last name. I yeah. made a decision a long time ago that if you talk smack about my company, you talk smack about me. It's my company yeah. solely. Oh, I do it too. I feel obligated. I said this to someone last week that said, what separates you from other companies? I said, my ability to understand how important your event is. I did a wedding on October 8th, 2005, and they looked at me and they said, oh, that, that's nice. I said, I did it with my wife and son in the hospital because I had my son by cesarean on October 6th, and my wife and I agreed six months out that if there was complication or problems, I would still do the wedding and then come back and see her in the hospital but she would have to deal with it. And that's A, why I knew I married the right woman, but B, what I gave to my client. My client did not know till the end of the wedding that night. They came up to me and said, I'm like, hey guys, how'd it go? I I thought it went really well. They're like, it went awesome. Oh my God, are you serious? You just had a baby? I'm like, yeah, two days ago. They're actually in the hospital. I'm going to go see them right now. Oh my God, why are you here? I'm like, because we have an agreement. I said I would do your wedding and that's what I did. And they couldn't get over it. They were like early to mid 20s. They genuinely were blown away that I showed up. But it was, to me, not a big deal. I said to Michelle, hey, I'm booking a wedding October 8th. We're having a cesarean on October 6th. Are you okay with that? Like, if there's complications, like, I need to know now whether I book it or not. But if I book it, I have to show up. Right. And she said, yeah, we'll be fine. If we'll be in the hospital, the doctors will handle it. There's nothing to worry about. So that was the mentality I've always used over these years. You make a promise, you keep it. You're as good as your word. If you say you'll be there, you're there. Now, God forbid you get in a car accident, you're out of, you know, you're out. That's a different deal. And hopefully DJs would step up, but he's got his wife to step up and say, Hey, my husband got in a terrible car accident. He can't DJ this wedding. Can someone help us in Chicago? Hopefully people step up. And I think the kindness of strangers kind of mentality, I think they would. Well, Buddy's got guys like me. I'm not that far away. I mean, right, but exactly. Really but you hope that if the me. emergency note goes out, oh, like if my wife way. goes out on Facebook and says and Instagram, Jay just got in a terrible car accident. He can't do his wedding. It's in four hours. Can someone help us? Someone would show up. And if I showed up at a wedding and said, hey, guys, I'm Jay. 
I know you hired Brian. Brian's in the hospital. He got in a car accident on the way to your wedding. He, we hope he's going to be okay, but he's unconscious right now. I'm here. I've got all the music. I've got the notes. I'm going to make sure you guys have a great day. They're going to walk away thinking a million things about you and thinking great things about me. I mean, that's just so, what this world is about. That's why so, you have understudies. So the show on Monday night, much like Jay's gigs, are about 20 minutes long. So in closing, <laughs> we got to close it. Cocktail so dinner, closing, 10 minutes of dancing. Done. That's it. Done. Done. In closing, I think the takeaway yeah. from here is maybe if you've got a head cold that's not a virus or a super spreader kind of wah, thing, wah, wah. maybe you should take some medicine and just get through the event. Right. And also, if you guys could send the money, because I think these guys are serious. Like, they're they're not kidding around. They want the money sent. What? No. Okay, never mind. I'll move the light. Okay, really, there we go. go. In a suitcase, the other, the other the thing, trash can. Yeah. Yeah, the, the other thing, it's really important to have some friends in the business, just in case an emergency completely out of your control right. pops up. I say friends because friends will take care of you when you're in need. Someone you associates can, are good. Hundred percent. Friends are better. Associates will want all the money, and uh, they will. Yeah, they will. They will. Friends will help. And, luck, and, luck, and luckily for you, Jay, the real father was at the hospital while you did the gig, so that worked out. See, that worked <laughs> out. Then, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Hey, now hey. I know why she was so quick to say, "Go ahead." Right. It's, it's always made sense. So it's plan like ahead. Blonde hair. I never understood. Plan ahead. Uh, because if you don't, you're going to end up angry and bitter like Jay when you get old. Yeah. So plan ahead. Back up. We don't it's because I walked 16 miles to walk. You had a long day. You had a, had long, a long day. day. And you got a fun day coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be good. We're looking forward to tomorrow. Just to prove it, it says it on my phone. There you go, everyone. 15.9 miles walked. Only another one of a mile. You had 16, you lazy person i well i thought that too i thought i should just go back out there but yeah that's a short it's not thing. about vodka and walking that just doesn't always work <laughs> out so happy easter i don't know whatever whatever yeah happy kwanzaa everybody whatever we happen to land on enjoy it doesn't matter what today is because yeah you're never going to see the show today anyway and so remember matter. love your valentine yeah, happy mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, folks. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Brian, though. What? what? Sponsored by. <laughs> what was this show sponsored by? Oh, yeah. Sponsored by DJ. Get Event. that in there. Yeah, you're right. DJ Event Planner. Jeez, Eric. Check you it. Ready you know, to be on it. top of it. But you know, the good news <laughs> you don't is that you're not going to be able to do it. Sponsor won't let <laughs> us know, out of the club. You can see the sponsors, but he can't find his car keys. Oh, stop it. We'll see you next time, or how we will see you.